Yeah, my name is Susanna, and I met quite some of you multiple times. <laughs> so lovely to see you again, and wonderful to see new faces. And uh, thank you for being here. And uh, this evening, uh, we want to talk about the armoring as a profession, and we're gonna open the box more around that and talking about our experiences. You will have the chance to ask questions. Uh, it can be a delicate um, area for some to jump into. So we decided like this is a, is a great topic. So we will share and you will be welcome to ask your question. Please do, because it's really, really for you. And the more you uh, ask and share yourselves, the easier it is for us to, to respond to you. Yeah. So feel free to ask, and if you want to have a, a chat, you can, you know, write in the in the chat box that you have a question and so on, and we might have a dialogue with you. And yes, yeah, so my name is Susanna. I am the co-founder of the Armoring Arts, and passionate about human potential and personal growth and everything that makes me feel more alive and happy, and where I can support other people in being the same. It's the short version, and I feel it's enough. <laughs> wow, well done. Yeah. You're applauding over there. <laughs> and next to me, I don't know if you're on the left or right, but on my on my left hand, there is Mr. Dean. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. So I'm Dean. For those of you that don't know me, I've been... Uh... In the armoring game for since I was about 37, 38. And uh, I've kind of gone from super hard approach to the armoring to sexual approach to the armoring to completely non sexual approach to the armoring to super soft touch the armoring. So kind of I've kind of gone around the block, if you like, with the, the way the armoring can be done. And uh, yeah, it's a big part of my life. I love it. So, of course, I'm passionate about it and I'm kind of eager to share my journey and, and also inspiring you for your journey, hopefully, in over the next hour. So, Matt, over to you. Mm, thank you so much. Hi and welcome, everyone. My name is Matt, German born. I'm into de armoring since 2010. And uh, uh, as a hands-on practitioner, I became a facilitator over the years. I have been in many, many trainings. And I'm the German consent police in the trial. Jawohl, Herr General. And uh, welcome, everyone. That's, that's uh, me for now, but you probably hear more. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, there is a, there is a lot uh, to share. <clears throat> and I was thinking, um, uh, it just pops up like when you said 2010, it pops out like I, I started also with the armoring around 2010. And I was thinking I can just share a bit about my journey when I started and then you, uh, Matt and Dian can do the same. What about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when, when, um, when I started, when I discovered the armoring and started with it in, in 2010, first I had, it was such a transformational process for myself that I, I, I really felt committed to learn and share with as many as possible. And by that time, there was not a movement of the armoring. There was not so many who was practicing it. It was new also in the kind of consciousness field. So it was uh, before that, I could see different trends going, you know, so before that was access consciousness, I think. And so then it was like, wow, this boom in Sweden. And then it became, wow, the boom of Tantra and, and the armoring. So I was kind of in the beginning of that. And um, when I started with the armoring, I met so much resistance from people. It was a hard task to take on because as much as I felt the love for it and the, the power of the transformation it can provide, but because it includes genital touch and sexuality, and because it's so distorted in our society, there is this myriad of projections and fears that arises in people, right? So I met so many fearful minds and I had to really just stay strong in my commitment and meet all these fears 
like I was called a prostitute and I was called out on God knows what for what I was doing because people were so afraid. And, and it made me contemplate, like I rode through that wave and I always said that I've been, I've been, um, um, I don't have a problem to stand up for the potential and the potency of the armoring, like because it's illegal in some part of the country. And yeah, in Sweden, it's it's, uh, it's illegal to uh, for a buyer to to buy a service where the practitioner is touching a genital, and it's absolutely not. You know, if you're not a gynecologist, you cannot touch genitals basically on people. But for me, it's always been a commitment with me and God, or me and and life more than the rule book. You know, and that is what I'm I'm standing for. Uh, and for me, it's also been the 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 um, yeah the willingness to show up deeply for that what I believe in and to know that in each and every transformational process there will always be resistance in the start yeah so now I, I noticed I went a little far here but the whole point was that it used to be a lot of resistance and I can understand for some people that it feels fearful or scary to take on that hat because people will judge yeah and uh, to find that yeah to find that that commitment within to show up what we believe for yeah i could talk more about it but i come a second turn so do you want to add on to that matt or dan all right so, yeah, when I started with the armoring, there was the same thing 2010 or so, and uh, was the same discussion. So I was just doing sessions a lot in, as well in Sweden. In, I, I did actually sessions everywhere in the world. And, and in most countries, it was illegal to put your hands for money on somebody else's genitals. That was not okay. So it was everything under the carpet and uh, illegal. And um, and it it was kind of legal under the umbrella of prostitution in Germany and in Sweden, but then um, you had to be registered as as a prostitute in this uh, 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 regard. And I have not done that, so I stayed illegal. Um, what I have heard over the years, there is, for example, a scar tissue remediation where you literally do a healing on scar tissue. That is a, a legal term, and there are a few other kind of parts that are um, making that kind of legal. And um, uh, what my journey went was more in this direction to understand really what the nervous system was about, what consent was about, how to create the agreement field, what trauma is, how the communication around trauma and assessment tools need to be in place, how to approach people, how to how to track people's situation where they were before actually hands on genital happened. Um, and learning more about that people are resourceful and expertise about their own body and I'm an expert about what I can do and that this are two skill sets they need to meet and that was my responsibility. So I started to create a profession as a as an um, facilitator and practitioner educator. So went over the years and just like help people to create the communication skill set and tools around that, how to create the agreement fields. And um, um, yeah, and I'm still super passionate about the armoring and whenever I can, I get a session and give sessions. Mr. Dian. So my journey with the armoring was, um, I kind of fell into it almost by mistake. I had no idea the armoring existed. So at that time, there was not really, um, it was just beginning through Tantra circles and TNT. I don't know if any of you heard of the TNT kind of is, that was actually, I feel what started uh, the public appearance of the armoring again. There's nothing new about the armoring and we can talk about it. Uh, I mean, it literally is as old as any religion will have a, the armoring aspect to it. Uh, Willem Reich in 2030s, he invented the word the armoring. So there's nothing really new with it, but it just somehow wasn't present much on a, on a surface of Europe. So that was my kind of introduction to the whole idea of transforming 
uh, myself, because it was to do with me at first, radical transformation in as short possible time uh, that was the armoring for me, or at least my understanding of it. And uh, and then luckily for me, I was running a Biodanza Heart in Motion School in Oslo and in Brighton. So I had a group uh, on a regular basis that I could actually practice with. So as I was learning and experiencing the armoring on myself, I then also started introducing it to my workshops and we were actually starting to play with external body the armory, not, not genital. And that actually carried on for four or five, maybe six years, maybe five years, which gave me a huge amount of progress in the field of how can we quickly, efficiently and, and as safely as possible transform stuck energy within the body. The reason I was kind of a little bit about safe because at that time it was quite hard touch. So I would say we were overstepping the in today's work, my, my in today's norm, it would be overstepping way overstepping the, the hardness of the touch that we were using. But I kind of went through that journey. So I kind of followed the, the armoring from almost like dark ages and now it's already pretty much everybody in Europe knows about the armoring, at least they heard about it. So I can see a huge shift in acceptance, in openness, in uh, even awareness of people that the armoring mm. such exists. Mm. So which brings us to the current uh, theme of why should you train or should you train to become a de-armoring practitioner or should you just like experience it for yourself and and kind of keep it like that mm. so can i run with it a little bit yeah mm -hmm. yeah so how we see it and for us this is when i say us is three of us or the armoring arts we kind of mm -hmm. over the last year been recognizing the armoring as a lifestyle more than a technique that we teach and somebody comes and learns the armoring and then does the armoring. It's becoming, or it became, a lifestyle, a way of being, way of living, which is continual uh, looking for the center line, continual kind of quest for purity, for openness, for alignment, for letting go of anything that doesn't serve us and, and doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't serve us anymore. So because of that, it started attracting over the last whatever few years more and more people i mean by by many 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 more people an interest in europe because it went from the armory when we started it it was kind of shadow aspect of sexual work it was definitely sexual and it was not self safe i mean the reason we started the school in the first place is because so many people got hurt through having the armory sessions where practitioners were just taking advantage or either sexually taking advantage or emotionally or physically hurting people. So it wasn't safe. It was definitely fringe and like uh, uh, it was underground basically. And so now when a lot of people are knowing about it, we are willing to now share the good things and why you should, but we think why everybody should become a diamond practitioner is because once you do a trainings or any kind of training in the well, I can talk about us because that's the only thing I know. Once you do our training, you're going to realize the potential of living in a community of normal people down to earth, connected to the heart, centered, like we are normal to supposed to when I look at what's going on in the world, I mean, it's it's madness. It literally is. That's not normal. That's anything but normal. So there is a huge value in creating big circles of friends and communities where we take care of each other, where we actually value simplicity of human existence, which at the core is the armoring. The armoring brings the simple human connectedness to everything that's human inside me and it lets go of all the stuff that it's kind of in a way. So I'm going to put a pause on there now and uh, and then we're going to come back to more why you should be training. But guys, do you want to add anything? I'm thinking if there is a, 
if there is a specific uh, question around this topic that some one of you want to ask and uh, then i'm thinking if there is a is a thread to hook on to what you were speaking down like i love this uh the the the, the I, I gave a session today for example and and just to meet each individual from heart and with presence and then knowing because i've done so much work on my own and i worked with a lot of people so there is a lot of experience in my body so just this to sit there were in my body and each session is basically different you know it never gets boring because it, each individual is different then there are of course some you know very common patterns in people have been behavior patterns etc but the the what i love about the dearmoring is the human rawness that we go through the body but it's also mindset it's life it's commitment it's uh, money it's passion it's it's uh, it's a purpose you know it goes the whole package of finding like the answer back into to alignment you know and 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 people often when they experience that they become amazed because it changes their life so much it's an empowerment tool deluxe <laughs> so working you know uh yeah, it's just for me, it's it's a very creative way of working with people. Like the only the only thing that is in the way of me and the transformation is me. Like the, because the the more I yeah, it's it's the ceiling is high depending on what we choose to to do. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm gonna wrap that up, Matt, and then I pass it on. But and this is the other thing. Like when when we start to work with the armoring, whoever starts with that, we always like in our circles, we also say like you have to feel into what. What is it that you want to offer? What is the way you want to do it? What does it look like for you? So it's not one form. Like this is a very, like we are very keen to empower people to find their own center line. Like what feels meaningful, fun, and in alignment for me to share. Yeah. So for some that might be to only do clothes on the armoring with specific tools. Some might want to deep into the more sexual awakening aspect of the armoring. Some want to do more the therapeutical. Uh, trauma just going to the trauma and it's all different yeah so it's really like there is not one fixed form like you make the rules really mm. yeah um i mean from my perspective saying that what was my passion and uh, my kind of what was driving me <clears throat> was my understanding as a tantra practitioner that there is a kind of an entire orgasmic universe out there and I'm, as a man, kind of has have been training myself over kind of decades of you know, porn addiction and all that stuff that most people do in their kind of teenage and 20s in this contractive part of sexual energy. So I just learned to squeeze and just hold my body and tense up and be tight and just like be in control and so have a sympathetic kind of approach. And when I came to the armoring, I just actually recognized that there's an entire orgasmic kind of frequency out there that I cannot access if my body is contracted so it is needed to relax and um, and that was you know in the beginning when I came to the armoring as a practitioner there was of course I loved that I was always good with my hands and I had some kind of body work um, educations um, <clears throat> But when I recognized how much I was contracted and dense in my own body how much I needed to release and how much I needed to let go that I can go into this expansion. And that's still my passion today. So that the armoring from my perspective is to kind of give people literally a, a performance upgrade in their sexual capacity. And that's, that's what my heart is really beating for. But I, one part I just wanted to add on what you said at the end. In the beginning of my dearmoring career, so when there were practitioners out there and I went to festivals and just met different practitioners, there was always this competition and nobody was sharing and telling what they were doing and everybody wanted to be better than the other one. And then just like uh, th th there was such a competitive field and when I came to this field of dearmoring, what we are doing here, I love this openness here. I love this, how we empower each other and how we share our skills and our gifts and how we're keeping each other accountable and actually looking at each other and saying, hey, you know, it's just like, 
I guess there's a shadow going on on here. Let's have a deeper look because you are here in your own way, like you said, Sana, of your highest potential. And um, and I, I guess as a professional, each and one of us has the intention to become impeccable and the best version that we can provide for our um, clients, customers, friends, uh, people we're working with. Um. While we're chatting, can everybody uh, please type in your question or just ask a question outright, just like raise a hand and uh, give us a pointers? Because I think now it's time to start talking about uh, the armory profession and why would you want to become one? And if you did become one, what are the potential? Um, what is the road ahead? What does it look like? You know, so. Uh, while I'm talking, if you can just like ask some questions in the chat and then we can start answering. But for now, uh, we were talking about before you came in, we were kind of talking about the subject. And one of the things that Sana was talking about or mentioning, uh, maybe you can take it up, Sana, actually, with the, uh, the fact that you become a dehammering practitioner and there are potential pitfalls. So, but you mentioned it a little bit. Uh, you want to take it on? Yeah. So, which uh, which which pitfall was that? <laughs> it was to do with. Well, actually, you mentioned it already with uh, sexual body work. So that was kind of that, that was. Yeah. Answered. So one. Okay. So then, yeah, yeah. One one is the. I mean, the pitfall. What is the pitfall? The 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 biggest. Yeah, that one is the bigger one. You know, and that all boils down because if we choose to go the way of sexual healing and gen touching genitals, that can be. A delicate subject for some like depending on who we are as individuals like i choose to trust that i'm guarded and i'm safe that's my point and i don't that's what i'm holding point for so i just trust and if something would go south for me i would get in you know standing court i would happily take that fight yeah happily mm -hmm. like i i trust and i'm even today i met a beautiful lawyer and, and she was like i'm just gonna back you up like let's make a mark <laughs> So for me, that is like the commitment to, to something greater than, than what society shows us, because I don't believe in that. I believe in creating new ways, yeah? But that's me. So if you start to work with sexual healing, I mean, yes, it's a pitfall, uh, depending on what country you are in. It can be, uh, I mean, in Sweden, you are not in the risk because you're not doing anything illegal. Uh, um, but the buyer, you, so you go under the sex law, basically, then the buyer can be the one who can have a problem if somebody would whatever tell somebody about <laughs> that they buy such a service from you. I don't know who would do that, but that is one pitfall. Um, of course, what is really, really important is to be clear then to have clear waivers and go through the agreements up front to be very, very clear what's happening, what's not happening, and most of all, staying staying being really really in ownership of your own boundaries and what you do and what you don't do yeah so you create that safe container for people basically uh other than that the pitfall i don't see really a pitfall with the armoring compared to other practices what would that I have be one. i mean only if we yeah one second yeah only the other thing would be if we choose like to go in hardcore touch on the arm on the physical armor like that we can actually hurt people. But for example, in our school, we would never teach such thing or promote such thing, you know. Yes, Dan. Um, the one that actually, it's not pitfall, but it's just like a responsible reminder that sometimes mm -hmm. we found that our students would be so eager to start practicing, they do the basic training and then they start leaving the job and they become the armoring practitioner when they're not actually emotionally or dynamically, energetically ready to hold space for the armoring. So that can actually put you off because the armoring is, requires, the reason it requires a lot of training is because I as a practitioner need to be able to hold space for pretty much anything that happens with my client. And I cannot react because if I react, then I'm not holding space and then the client doesn't feel safe. And then the session from then on is like a massage you know, Kashalo, it doesn't actually go into the armoring. Mm -hmm. So one of the potential pitfalls is that you start offering it before you actually fully trained already. A trained 
let's not talk about fully ready, emotionally, mentally, energetically ready to hold space. So there can be potentially one, like if you start doing it and then you see that the result of your sessions is more like a massage rather than actual de-armoring, you can be put off and you think, oh, well, I'm not good enough or I can't do it or whatever, and then you stop. So if that's what you find is happening, then just have more training and more sessions on yourself and then you're going to be much better to much better space holder actually to do it. So that's one pitfall. Uh, we removed another pitfall, which was huge. I'm just going to mention it quickly, which was that the word the armoring used to be privately owned by a Swiss practitioner until a few months ago. And then she started hunting all of us, the armoring practitioners in Europe, especially Switzerland, Germany, and Austria, to stop using the word the armoring or we go to court. We're going to be basically sued. So many people, that was actually a big, one of the reasons why people were like, well, what's the point of training in something that I can't actually do. Luckily, we went to court and we won the battle. So now the word the armoring is free and anybody can use it in, in Europe. So we kind of removed that pitfall. Uh, other pitfalls, um, other pitfall is actually I fell into it. And the reason I'm celibate right now, I've been celibate for the last seven years or so. And the reason for that is because I wasn't really ready to do sexual de -armoring. I did a huge amount of it professionally, and I, then I fucked myself up. Energetically, I got super tangled, and now I'm in the process of untangling. So another potential pitfall is actually is the same to what I said before, that you're not ready to do uh, what you want to do, and then you screw yourself up. So that actually is something that we can address uh, maybe in another webinar, like fully, because it's it's impossible. Sana, you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to talk into that one. While it, while, because we, when we go into such intimate spaces, the, the, um, it is important to be very clear with one's integrity, yeah? And not overstep or not get hungry on a body or not use or not subtly manipulate somebody into whatever sexual arousal or being with them or i mean there are so many so many stories out there now by uh, people who have done whatever a week something like an ista level one and suddenly they are the armoring practitioner and they offer a yoni massage and they are like going to heal the yoni and all the women shall surrender because they need that and if they are not surrendering they are not they're just in, stuck in the masculine and <laughs> So the pitfall can be like an ego implosion or a, a ego uh, blow up and to watch that yeah to really watch that and be, be but at the same time not shy away not shy away from doing the work yeah because it's, it's a training and integrity is a trait like it's such a training and in integrity yeah both in showing up so i'm reading your comment there mirabel like you have this idea that you the pressure of standing 100 percent uh, present shy, like makes you shy away from doing it. But the thing is, we do drift off once in a while, you know, and it's all practice. It's practice, it's practice, it's practice and determination, yeah, and integrity and clarity and just owning that, yeah. But so the pitfall can be that some people start with the armoring or I see that sometimes when they start to work more with the sexual dearmoring or sexual awakening that they actually come because they're hungry. They're, they're, they are hungry for a relationship, they're hungry for intimacy, they are hungry for the other sex or they're hungry to just being touched on their sex, which is fine. But as a practitioner, we need to know when to do what, yeah? So the pitfall can be, am I projecting my longing onto my clients or am I holding point for the highest of the transformation, yeah, which is the most important. And just to add, the, this doesn't, one second, this doesn't have to be just to do with sexuality. It can also be, for example, I need my mommy or I need yeah. my daddy. Mm -hmm. And then be I do the power. session and actually, huh? Or be in power. Yeah. So mm -hmm. those, this is what we meant about actually you're not ready to hold space for the armoring. But that's fixable. Just get more training and you're done, basically. Don't give up just because of that, Matt. Mm. Yeah, there's there's one sentence that I love to say. Uh, you can just tune in for yourself how you feel about that. But I like that um, comparisons. You can only guide people as far you've gotten yourself, and that's that's 
true for me. And I've, I've kind of shared that with many other practitioners and they said just like, well, I don't know if that's true. You know, there are great trainer who can guide people into a championship without having won a championship themselves. But at least this trainer needs to know how to play that game. And, uh, and, and, and this is something that I uh, really support in in kind of people's journey uh, getting into that and now talking about the kind of uh, difficulties or pitfalls is, and I just remember that about myself um, from the very beginning on when I went into a session. You know, in the very beginning, the session was just like nobody knows what a de-armoring or a tantric session was and literally you could just like create that your, yourself in a way. Till I just recognized that when I don't have to have this um, power head on, I can just allow myself to be vulnerable before a session. And when I'm vulnerable before a session, then I notice that there, I'm literally a little bit insecure before a session. Do I know enough? Do I have enough knowledge? Do I have enough wisdom, experience, and all that stuff? And that's something that comes across with many other practitioners again and again and again. They go before a session um, and uh, they say, just like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I just feel so insecure. I'm, I'm vulnerable. I'm scared even. And then I said, just like, well, this is exactly where you dive deeper is in. You become comfortable in being uncomfortable. And when you're feeling scared and vulnerable before a session, then... Imagine how scared and vulnerable your client might feel who comes. Yeah. So and so that that opens up the door for compassion and empathy, and that's actually a really good thing. So if you feel a little bit worried about if you're doing the right things, then I can assure you you're probably on the right track when you have the right people around you. Hmm. Um, yeah. Um, I was hmm? I was just yeah. thinking. Also, because I hear, you know, there are people coming to our trainings and this like the demand of the armoring practitioner. You know, if we look at from when we started uh, and the field was like resisting and didn't know, know really and it felt more underground to it's actually, you know, it's it's more demand. Like I and I can also see there's more mainstream people coming in like Yoni massage and Yoni the armoring is like trending. It's in, in there you know, in the fashion magazines. And I mean, it's, it's really growing. So that the need for more practitioners is growing. You know, there is it is a higher demand for it. And that's why I also think it's a wonderful profession to take on and not shy away. Like, is, is will there be enough? Like, yes. And the more people we are, the more uh, we can support and the more the word spreads, you know, so it becomes like a ripple effect. So it's definitely a, a rising demand for it it yeah both the need because it's so incredibly powerful and also there are enough customers for everyone that's for sure and what i also see you know if we look at the financial aspect of of the army so um market price for quite some years has kind of been 200 euros for two hours yeah and i think that's been a market price for 12 years <laughs> and then of course the more the more you grow into your package, uh, into your practice, uh, the more you can raise your prices. And even if it's not about the, the prices, but it's also a sustainable profession to have. You know, you don't need to do 10 massages every day, I don't know, or, you know, you can do two dearming sessions a day. That's a five hour, you know, with a break in between, and it's okay. So it's actually uh, on a financial level, depending on what we're looking for and what we want and our standards, it's, it's a rewarding profession in that sense as well. It's super rewarding. I mean, yeah. come on, like, you know, when I, cause I did like reflexology and Reiki and massage, you know, before and, and then the armoring and watching the, the transformation in a client before and after, I mean, that's like rewarding hundred mm. percent. It's incredible to see what the armoring can do and what it does to people so that's like a huge reward so i feel like maybe now we're kind of crossing into the benefits like we kind of gone through the pitfalls and now we're kind of starting to talk about the benefits of the armoring why should you actually become one and yeah. what do you gain from it but maybe just see if there is a question for what we that's said that's what like, i was gonna say it. like we yeah. don't really see any questions down there so please either ask us or write it is so it we helpful? can actually yeah raise a hand is it helpful yeah. 
Okay, one thing it's helpful. Okay, great. So help us make it more helpful for you yeah. because it's Ask really questions. Yeah. yeah. So if we don't cover the subject that you're kind of interested in, then then please let us know so we can do yeah. our best to answer it for that. you. Yeah. So while you're doing that, um, when we're talking about who is your customer, potential customer, literally absolutely everybody who is grown up is potentially your customer, which is amazing because even we can never run out of customers literally ever. Like more and more people are beginning to understand what the armoring can do for them. And so we're talking hundreds of millions of people in Europe alone. So please become practitioner and train others and we will all have plenty of work until we die. Mm. So in terms of other benefits of this work, I mean, on a personal level, it's super rewarding to see people transform. I feel useful. I feel useful when I do this, you know, because I can see what it does to people. Um, what about other benefits, guys? Do you have any? I can talk, but I've been just talking, so I'm thinking if Matt want to share some. Well, you know, just like as you said, that at the end, there are 100 million people, uh, hundreds of millions of people out there. You know, it's the interesting thing specifically coming from a, from, from a training um, and then kind of having a room of 40, 50 people, something like that. And you feel like just like, oh, my God, you have just like saved the world. And that's, it's, it's, it's a group full of people, completely liberated, free, open. And it's just like everybody, every cell is vibrating. And you celebrate life. Right, and you just feel just like we just nailed it. It's so good, and you you feel like okay, I can die now. It's life is good, and then you just jump in the train and go out of the station in the city you live, and then you actually see the entire world needs that, and we have just even put a small drop on the stone that has no ef effect. So we need you, we need you, and we need more of you. <laughs> no, but seriously, people, come and ask some questions because uh, we're really here for you. And uh, either raise your hand or don't raise your hand, just ask a question or type it in. Let's have this conversation moving. What's going on inside you? I can see you are thinking stuff is going on. So come yeah. on, let's have your thoughts out the public, not public, whatever. You know what I mean? Get them out. De armor yourself and open up the microphone. Just, just <laughs> say it. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, nobody has questions? Unbelievable. Okay, we just blabber on then. Yeah. No, but like, no. Oh, 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 Rick is coming. Yeah. Go for it, Ulrike. Maybe you want to share something. Save Ulrike. the room. Yeah, I, I want to share that I just uh, spent a week with Susanna in Barcelona. And it was very intense again. Um, the same as it was intense with Dian in, in Denmark. And um, my question is that I feel that sometimes... Um, when people go into process, it's so intense that I feel that um, it needs aftercare. In, in the retreats, it's actually quite easy. I had this one session with a man who, who really went in deep. And then he didn't show up for the party. And I was really worried mm. that, some, that I kicked off something that he wasn't able to hold. So... The next morning I could go to him, I talked to him, I had breakfast with him, so that's fine. But so, so, so where do we find, um, when they go in deep, do we re-traumatize? There, there's this fear in me of, of, um, yeah, of, of actually awakening a beast that might mm. come out and then they're on their own when I send them home. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yes. 100%. So, okay. so when? Okay, uh -huh. so, no, 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 go for it. Uh, so, uh, yes, that is very normal that, I mean, that's a skill we develop to both keep, let's say you, you offer a two hour session to somebody and they go through wave of the wave of the wave of expression. Yeah. And so then it's your job both to like, okay, now maybe it's 20 minutes left. I'm going to take it down. I'm not going into more process. The client has enough time to integrate. And depending on the maturity of the client, so that you take a finger on the pulse, you see, okay, is this somebody who is more in the beginning of the journey? Is this somebody who is more used to work with themselves? Uh, for example, if I have somebody who is more in the beginning, I assure them that what you're going through now is 
you're really brave, you're very courageous, everything is normal. It might be that you feel a little overwhelmed leaving from here, and that's just fine. You're just getting more contact with yourself, you got to, you're just getting more honest, and it might be a little uncomfortable in the beginning. So I reassure them that what they are experiencing is valid and it's important and to kind of train them because especially when people start to get in contact with emotions and they're not used to being in that field like they're not used to it it can be kind of why well, am i angry am i crying what am i doing with this they don't have the map to to release each emotion in its own frequency kind of so they can become confused control issues might take over control behavior and they, they get scared but so then i talk into that pattern and, 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 and comfort it and say, it's all safe, you're great. You might feel vulnerable, but that's okay. Just welcome it, welcome it, welcome it. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes I, if I have time and space, I might sit with the person a little longer just to make sure that they are okay. And, uh, and then I also offer like, if you need anything, you can give me a call or reach out. We check in tomorrow. So it's like I, it depends a bit on who I have in front and and what they are dealing with and the mature level of maturity that they have, yeah. But then 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 to show them that I'm available, that they are not alone, basically, and encourage them to have free time after a session. So like sometimes you know, yeah, the more you can set the container and pre-frame the potential, the more they can be prepared. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Was it the start of something? Sound. Okay. So, so from my perspective, what I would say, um, from the kind of the plan, the blueprint, the map that I try to implement in each of you at the training, is that one for sure when you leave the training and you put your hands on people's body, you know for sure. I'm sure. Because otherwise, you probably would have not left the training. I'm sure you don't traumatize a person in a session. Yeah, this is an, 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 a very, very important piece. There's no traumatization. This is the old school of of, of uh, tantric dearmoring and stuff that we have seen in some schools. So traumatization is just completely off the map. Re-traumatization is something that. Um, is a kind of a hard word, you know, when you, when you work with somebody else and they coming into a memory of something that is stored in their body and you are attuned with them and you assure in the safe container that they tell you, oh my God, this is painful. I don't know. I can handle it. It's scared, but I want you to do it. Yeah. So, so, so you have the skill set that you can literally tune in how far people want to go. And when you as people, you make sure that you never ever go deeper than they're actually ready for. And for example, from my assessment as the facilitator, when I just tune into you, Ulrike, and the way how I have seen you and perceived you and have observed you, I'm hundred percent, hundred percent sure that you don't re-traumatize people. None of our previous students or the previous group is there. I mean, this is like, you know, we are touching on a subject again that I was mentioning the pitfall that you potentially are not ready to start working. For as long as you have those kind of questions, you need more training. Because, but... <laughs> because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> going into Sana, going into a, a professional situation, having those kind of doubts in your head, I deem it personally, Sana, you can have your opinion, I deem it as unprofessional. So I want to, and the reason I'm saying this is because I made so many mistakes. I hurt so many people, clients, paying clients in my profession. So from experience, I'm saying, I feel you're not ready. Like I wasn't ready at the time, but because I didn't have a guide, I didn't have a teacher, they didn't exist, the school didn't exist, I just kind of made my own way through the shrubby bushes and whatever. Uh, and the prices sometimes were expensive of learning the stuff that I now teach. So have decent training, deal with, like, get 
informed, not just informed, get trained in trauma, get trained in reparenting, get training in space holding, <clears throat> get, and then start doing sessions on your friends before you start tra ch charging money so that you kind of are breaking yourself slowly and responsibly, safely into a professional situation. Uh, I would also recommend stop a session at any point you feel you're losing ground because that's better to do and to apologize and say, look, I'm really sorry, I can't hold space for this. This is your money back. I'm really sorry, but like go to someone else because I'm not able to hold it. You know, that's better to do than to actually fuck things up and try to bodge it and try to hide it. And, and because client will feel if they feel your insecurity, they will feel it instantly. Mm. They might not know what it is, but there will be something in the body that they just cannot trust it. They cannot relax deep enough because they can feel your insecurity. So this is my, my five cents on that. Um, Sana, so because, because of another I'm five still, cents. Okay. <laughs> I'm still not finished, actually. Okay. I just wanted to go into answering the... Uh, uh, no, can I, I want to talk into that piece before okay. we move on, okay. because I think it's really important. Okay. Uh, because we, for example, I come from the angle of self-doubt, which I, you'd never really had, Dion, back in the days. <laughs> I'm not good enough, that's my question. <laughs> so I love you, enough. you know that we yeah. just have different, different angles. Mm -hmm. So I, for, for me, it took a very long time to show up as a facilitator, and in my, in my sessions, I needed another certificate, another training. I was never good enough. I was so afraid of showing up, yeah? I was so afraid. So it took me really a long time and a lot of pain until I realized that I'm just, because my insecurity and, and, and how, how little I believed in myself was in the way of me doing the work. And I never hurt any of my clients. I never traumatized anybody. I never, you know, that I know of. Yeah. I don't have that track record because for some reason that just doesn't happen, you know, in my session. And often what I've seen is that the people who doubt themselves the, the most and nothing is black and white, never. So you know, I'm generalizing and also talking out of my own experience and people I witnessed and patterns in people like behaviors yeah certain behave certain patterns and certain behaviors act and behave in certain ways <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh to clarify that like some people and i see so many of those coming through our school who are really heartfelt want to do so good in the world but there is this lack of self-trust so they think they need just another training, another training, but what they actually need to show up and do the practice and do the work and being assured that they are doing a great work. Yeah. So this is also a fine line to look into. Am I just like being scared? Like I want to be so perfect and so good, some shiny way of doing the work. Yeah. Or am I just not ready? You know, this is also a maturity question. Yeah. But if any of our students who've done the trainings, if you feel you are in that place, please, please reach out to us and ask. It's like, you know, this is what's going on. Can you reflect on me? Yeah, like, please use us for that. But I think that's a really important question, especially in the field of, of uh, in the field of us who want to provide with goodness in the world. Yeah, there's many of us who doubt ourselves, yeah, and don't trust ourselves while your gift is so needed. Yeah, so that's my... I think it's super important that one because I see it over and over and over and over again. And then I see these dickheads and, and people who are just like arrogant and just go out and they have done a weekend course and they're just like, oh, I'm so good. And uh, you know, they who definitely need more training, but they're so self secure that they don't, uh, they don't really care. Yeah. And these are often the people who hurt other people because they lack em emotional maturity. Yeah. That's my take on it. And my five five cent is, you know, in the very beginning, and the people who are here who have been in the training remember that that I I talk a lot about this dynamic that we all want to do and give more, that we feeling valued, yeah. So we just we 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 just want to provide that we're just feeling um, worth it. And this is the entire thing in the, in, in the first two, three days where I say just like, you know, for the first, first two, three days, just like there's no giving here. You know, you just have to stop being in action and give for this period of time that you just really know how to receive and what receiving is. And when you're receiving is really in your body, then you know you can literally um, give something that is not conflated with receiving. 
And when you know what you want, what you want to receive, then you can help other people to get what they want to receive. And then you don't give more than they actually ask for and you learn to tune into their body that you, you never do more than they're actually capable of. And this is one of the rules, rather do less than too much. It's one of the rules. Hmm. Is this helpful for you? Please raise a hand or yeah. Okay, great. Are there any questions? Yeah, there's a question <laughs> asked to ask, ask it. No, okay. Is there anyone in here who kind of considering to join the training or curious or would like to expand your toolbox or nobody? Yay. <laughs> we can't hear you. No. <sighs> yes, I would like to uh, enjoy with this uh, new experience, uh, put some other tool uh, in my box. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What is it that is fascinating for you with this, with the arm ring? Like you've like you've been feels like you've been around it, like sniffing a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I yeah. sniff a lot of this uh, <laughs> this energy because mm. I I experimented by myself mm. and uh, it's really helpful. Mm. Yes, that's it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so, so do you have a concern about joining the training or do you have a question or I, uh, some some specific uh, uh, structure basically but i think i can find the, the, the structure how train uh, whole it, how long is this training uh, it takes time uh, investment energetic uh, as a money time uh, uh, but I think uh, I can check it out. Uh, Those kind of things are on on web on the website. Yeah. Yeah. So this yes, this you can yes, find yes, there. Not... And then if you have any questions, all three of us are open. Just write to us if you want to have a one to one uh, half an hour. Yeah, just discovery call. Actually, any of you, if you want to just have a one to one and find out specifically more about you and your needs and your questions, please do get in touch. Um, well, let's let's make it more concrete. If you want to get in touch, um, Diane or Sana, could you please write the email um, of, of the Armoring Art? So, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with one of us, so please feel totally free to reach to reach out, and then um, we will go in connection with you, sending you a link for a Calendly thing, and then you can, with the person of your choice, have a thirty-minute kind of check-in call. So that's the best way. Here we go. So please take that email address and send it. Uh, who you want to have a 30-minute kind of check-in discovery call. And then we take you by the hand and guide you to the door. And you have to walk through. So want to. Uh, there are a couple of things that I want to address here from uh, uni first. Mm -hmm. uh, there was... Huh? Mm -hmm. I just said... Mm -hmm. Uh, there are two. Uh, uh, is there a document where you ask from clients they, that they understand where they come from? Well, honestly speaking, for me personally, we do have a intake form, but I prefer talking. I prefer having a Zoom conversation or WhatsApp conversation and actually face them, feel them, have a conversation half an hour or longer to really see if I can be helpful to them because sometimes I can and sometimes I cannot. So rather than having a document, uh, I tell them a bit in, in great length about what to expect, what not to expect, what it is, what it's not, so that the mind can start relaxing and uh, trust in the process. Um, I can talk into that as well. Okay. Uh, I enjoy having documents for various reasons. One, it saves me time. Second, I can track back and read patterns in clients. So I can, I get their words and their emotions. I can start to track. It's just useful for my, my own growth as well. So I like to have um, intake forms. And if I, often I notice energetically if there is somebody I want to work with or not. So then I, 
but then it depends like if somebody needs a call i have a call yeah but i, I always initially start with the with the with the document thank you okay. hmm. and then there was another thing uh, is there a, a different kind of pitfall if you're male or female uh, practitioner <clears throat> um, essentially no but also yes depending on who you are and what kind of sessions you offer um, but I think this kind of question is actually more suited to the training. So when you come to the training, we're going to answer that question at great length. But within this webinar, maybe we can do another webinar on it. But within this webinar, I think it's going to take time away from. Uh, I mean, we can talk okay. into it briefly because it's also useful if somebody is contemplating, you know, for their own profession. And it can be really valid to speak into it, even though it's. It's not black or white. It's not a yes or no. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not. Easy, uh, kind of uh, response because yeah, like the answers is all about what you offer, uh, how much in integrity are you, uh, what kind of clients do I attract? Do you attract? How do you hold that space? So the whole point is that it doesn't in in the core it doesn't matter. In the core, it doesn't matter because the the what you want to want to develop, or at least that is the most interesting for me, is how deep can I go in myself? So how can how point for everything that arises in other being and with love and care and sometimes a little bit of fierce love, <laughs> reflect back their potential. Yeah. So how comfortable can I become with projections or fears or uh, desires and hold point for that in a very loving way that creates like an aha, uh -huh, you know, so I empower my clients. And, but again, it's all, all about, you know, who we are, what we hold point for and what depth we carry, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. Because working with the armoring is not touching a body and removing armor physically it's like a physical mental spiritual like, like we said in the beginning holistic. So how, yeah holistic is very holistic so it's like okay who do i have in front and what comes up and how can i use that to support this person into more power and potential for themselves that's my job that's how i see it there's a question from uh, Wim. Uh, is there a difference between neuroaffective touch from a line up here and de Um I'm not super familiar with this work from uh, a line up here, but what I know is that it's pretty much the same in uh, physical touch and trauma recovery, and they're trying to work non verbal. And um, but this is what you know in the armoring. I would not say that there's one form of the armoring, and this one form is what we do. We do a form of the armoring, and the form of the armoring by the values of our own life experiences through our own profession and through our own life. And partly of that is, and this is what I stand for 100% is the. Uh, neurological breakdown of the nervous system, of the somatic nervous system, of the autonomic nervous system in relationship to the polyvagal theory. So we just go really in depth uh, there and in combination, um, with, in alignment with consent and communication uh, and being capable of reading neurological cues of the body. This is one of the important pieces that we cover. Um, but if you want to know more, please feel free to reach out and have this 30-minute call with me or just like jump in and get the full download in your own body by experiencing it. Are there any more questions? We still have about 10 minutes. So we would really love to use it for anything you want to ask about becoming a Diamory practitioner, any doubts, any questions, any ideas, any questions, any anything. We are here for you. Is there any of the previous students who want to share something about your journey? Let's let's let's, let's wait for questions if we can. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe, Maybe the, the previous, previous student has some, some questions. questions. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has questions. Okay. Comments, Comments statements. statements. Doubts. Don't be shy to ask, honestly. Is there a way right. of the armor my father without touching him? Yes, there is, yeah. 
or, or be shy and ask anyway. Uh, yeah, no, the Wim is asking, is there a way to dearm my father without touching him? Uh, dearmoring the way we do it, uh, at least I, in I terms, I do it in three different ways. So physical touch, uh, conversation and energy work. So uh, all three are super, super efficient in dearmoring people. You don't have to touch them at all. And this is something, again, that there are different ways of dearmoring. And within our school, we practice those three. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I invite you, Wim, you seem to be like interested. Come come to the training and, and experience it and see how it works. It really, it's, I cannot give you more information within five minutes, but yes, you can. I mean, depending yeah. on what it is that you want to do armor of course yeah and the and the great thing in the training is just like before it goes into de-armoring we're really going into that what is armor how it's formed and how it shows up and then actually how to relate with armor and if you just um uh, just meet armor with De with 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 defense and with attack, the armor will get stronger. So it's a little bit like you just do Aikido. You just play with the energy and just let the armor go, just like bigger, just like yeah, what? Well, just bring it on. It's so good. You're resourceful by being in your protection, and we support you in doing that. But you know, it's good stuff to learn to let it go if you don't need it when you're amongst your beloveds. I mean, you know, the the first question is somebody shows armor like a father. And you can ask him, does that work for you, Dad? You know, you've been alive for a while. Does your strategy work? If it does, great, keep it. Be as you are. If it doesn't, then maybe you want to talk about it, you know? But again, this is like such a short amount of time to go deeply into uh, answering this question. But the answer is yes, but you need to be trained. Mm. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Mm. Now or never. I mean, the great thing that comes to my mind, what you just asked Wim about with your father, for example, in the training we have um, one of the key dynamics we work with is the processing circle. And you see people show up in their rawness with what is. And we just had just a processing circle in the webinar a few weeks ago here. But when you know how to meet people in their in their contraction in their shield in their in, in their armor and 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 let them show up it's just like you, you just learn so much in the short period of time in the processing circle and uh, maybe some of the people here who have been in the training can give a short reflection on that but it's just like it's it's a tool for life <laughs> yes I would say that the, the path of the armoring that we do it is really like the answer is a way of life. It's a way of becoming more empowered, more in tune, standing in our power, living more to our potential, becoming more alive, like allow us to be more of who we are in our true essence. And that is so unique for each and individ each individual. We're so repressed, so programmed so early. You know, we forget who we are, we forget why we're here, we feel life is meaningless, people are getting depressed, addicted, working in shit jobs, like, what type of life is that? For me, our school is like, okay, back to essence, back to your essence, back to your individuality, back to that what you want to become, that's really, and then we just work and remove that what is in the way of that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's liberation, yeah. <laughs> I have a suggestion because we just uh, um, we're not running out of time, but we just have limited time. We want to we want to talk a little bit about the training in itself, some kind of uh, corner pillars, when, how, where, what, how many places we still have left, what's going to happen for how long. You you want to jump into that? Mm hmm. You can do that. So we have spaces. It's 11 days, it's happening soon, and you're all welcome. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's in an amazing space, in, uh, an hour outside of uh, Stockholm in a place called Vestera. Is that pronounced right? Vesteros. Um, Vestero. Vesteros. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of an an old mansion uh, that we have just for ourselves. Uh, um, just look at the pictures and, and it's just... 
Yeah. <clears throat> and we run the training from 4th of April to 14th of April. And right now we really desire more men. So is there any gorgeous, lovely men who want to bring their power and potential into the world, then please join us. Uh, so yeah, that's less than a month left. Mm. Um, how many spots do we have open six? Was it? Mm, we, we have, have some. Yeah, six for six. men. Yeah. Okay. And one for women, I think, or two. Yeah. Okay. So anybody who is sitting on the fence don't know if that's the right thing. I have I've heard somebody saying the other day this is just like just doing the training as a practitioner and getting into the uh, uh, professional line of it, but still doing this ten day training is just like a two year therapy. So, um, and I see Godelis head nodding. <laughs> so so this is this is something. You can only guide people as far you've gotten yourself. This is far. How, this is how far you can get, and this is how far you can get uh, guide people. That's the, that's the benefit. Can I add something to that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, you're talking all the time about becoming a, a practitioner, which is very useful, and we need more people, I think. But I would even. Um, um, do this training without ever becoming a practitioner just for self-development. It's mm. so, so very worthy. It, it, it brings so much. Yeah, like you said, Matt, uh, it's it's worth two years of therapy for sure. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Hodler. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we know this is our training and of course we are biased, but really this is a, uh, this is pretty fucking amazing training. You know, if I just remove myself and look at it from the outside, it's not really that many spaces that I know of that are so kind of rich in, in what they offer. Mm. Yeah. So from my perspective, what I would say is, so we, we don't want to nail it onto you. You have to come. Even though I would say everybody who hasn't done it yet, just like, just do it because it just changes lives. Um, but again, there is this, this email there. And if you sit on the, on a fence and you're not really sure, the best thing that I always recommend is just like sleep a night over it and, uh, make a choice over the weekend. If you just want to reach out and have a, have your questions and your doubts, if you have some answered, just reach out and, uh, have a call with one of us and, uh, and let's have a conversation from human to human. Um, Wim is asking, uh, of course you can, man. Where about you live? Where are you based? Wim. Uh, I'm from Belgium. In Belgium. So uh, in Belgium, there are a number of practitioners. Also in Holland, there are dozens that we can put you in touch with. Uh, if you follow on, are you on Facebook? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, there's a group called the armoring. And uh, in it, we have probably at least a few hundred practitioners from Europe. So just tell them, hey, guys, I'm keen to test it and uh, who lives nearby. And then my recommendation is connect with two or three, fill them out, have a conversation, see if you vibe with them. Choosing a right practitioner is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Because with some you will vibe with others you won't. And so the experience may be like, yeah. So just make sure that you have someone. The most important is that you trust them energetically, emotionally. You just have to look at them and somehow I trust you. Mm. If that's there, then you're in safe hands. And go and do a session or two or three. Uh, do it next week. And then uh, let us know if you want to join the training after you tried it. You know, <laughs> that's the best way. You know, you have to try it. Mm. So I'm a bit too to remember new into the start of a ten day training or something. So Say again. I'm too new into it in, into this yeah. just ten day training. I have to get a taste first and see yeah. it. Yeah. I mean <laughs> it's recommended, but what is your background? Like where what's your kind of uh where you're coming from in terms of working with people or like working on yourself? Uh mainly three principles teaching. I don't know it. It's helping people understand how they create their own experience. Mm. Uh, yeah. Bye. Okay. It's more mental. Yeah. Is it a, a kind of a cognitive work or a somatic or 
both? It's actually spiritual. It's like Good. helping people get a feel with spirit, the formless side of, of life. Okay. Um, and it sort of helps people relax and then everything else flows from there. Mm. Okay. But, uh, but that's actually the same. And <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. We I'm, help people I'm, relax I'm, and let it flow, but I'm, maybe it's a slightly different I'm, gateway. I'm, I, I, I like this approach of kind of the, the um, uh, descending uh, embodiment of spirit through the armoring. That's a really good uh, approach to see it. Yeah. One second. Ulrike is there? Ulrike, jump. I just wanted to say that it sometimes also makes sense to talk to somebody one-to-one -one who's done it because I had two people that I did armoring on and I told them about the training and one went to the level two and another one is going to the basic training. So I find that um, even when a training session um, and talking with somebody who's been through it and who's been changed by it, mm, yeah, uh, best. might be different than talking to a teacher where mm. you might feel that they're trying to sell it. Thank you for offering Ulrike. Why don't you two exchange email addresses right here and then you can actually get in touch or phone numbers. Please do it right now in the chat. You need to write it in so he can find you. And also put in mind because I'm also from Belgium and we're both from Flanders, so we speak the same language. Hey. Hey, perfect. Okay, so go for it. Uh, write, write those numbers down or emails or whatever. Yeah, this is, a, this is a hard shit for us, of course, you know, we're facilitating that and, and of course, I want everybody to come to have the experience and, and uh, just like learn the best stuff that I found in my life. Why would I not try to sell it? <laughs> yeah. I want to sell it to you. <laughs> but also, it's, it's like, it, yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> It's just such a good, I'm just proud of this thing, to be honest. Of course. <laughs> proud of it. Of course. That, that's, uh, that's the baseline. And then, but you know, the thing is, Sana, well, like when, when we started it, there was, we were the first school, there was nobody yeah. else teaching this stuff in Europe. And then we started it and then it was like, do, 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 do. But now looking back, like we had a personal about it and like now looking back, it's like, wow. I mean, this is really wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just really wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, just listening to people who who did it and what they get from it and how I feel after and you how we feel after leading yeah. it. Profound. It really is wow. Yeah, and you know, and, and another great question would be just for you, Wim, or anybody else who is sitting on the fence, just like go to this dearmoring group and just ask just a very innocent question: Why shouldn't I do that? Right, and and I guess there is not many responses coming back i i imagine if so then we have something to learn to do better but i think in that group it's not uh yeah it's a different group i mean if they would be put into our private group it's different i mean in mm. the dearming group it's a lot of different people you know mm. a, many, um, so many who have done our training quite a lot i think in the armory is probably a few hundred of ours mm. you know yeah mm. so should we give him a little discount wait we Shall have the we... Women's Day tomorrow, and we have wanted to make an, an offer for all the men who want to make the lives of women better. So we're going to offer, instead of offering the women a discount, we want to offer the men a discount. <laughs> no, but seriously, should we give them some, like, as a kind of gesture of, of goodwill for people that are in this, uh, in this webinar, shall we say, like, I don't know, 150 off or 200? 200? 200? Yeah. Voila. So if any of you wants to come on in, then we give you 200 euros discount just because... Because we want your money. <laughs> <laughs> How to fuck it up, you know? No, yeah. seriously, like as a, as a gift, you know? But within uh -huh. a 48 hour sign up. So we put a yeah, frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, All right. So now I want to bring it to completion. It's 20 past. We said we're going Yeah, to it's time to come to an ending of this. Um, I hope it's been useful. Uh, and uh, helpful and um, yeah been giving you some something to think about and digest and inspire you uh, so thank you for coming here tonight and and also please if question arises or there is a, a specific topic you would like us to talk into 
please write to us yeah so you can write in uh, into info at thearmoringarts.com or you can write to one of us Susanna Beatrice mm-hmm. Matschvent or Dian Matika and also it goes for our students like just come up with topics we can kind of and give back yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining mm, have yeah. a lovely 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 thank evening. you thank you thank you and we we'll see some of you soon and others maybe a bit later yeah yeah thanks for joining everyone have a beautiful evening much love and bye yeah ciao ciao ciao, ciao. ciao. thank you all bye bye thank you thank you oh.